Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome to episode number 67 of the Healthy Skin Show. In today's episode, I want to share with you a very powerful way to help you better manage and ultimately master stress. It's pretty commonly stated by most people in our community, regardless of what type of skin rash condition they have, that stress is a huge trigger. It's not like we can just go live in a cave or a bubble somewhere where no stress exists. And in fact, we actually need stress in order to be healthy and develop a sense of resiliency. So if you can't control or get rid of stress in your life, then the only thing left to do is adjust how you react to it, how you deal with it. So consider this, when something really awful happens or you're panicked over something that pops up in the moment, what's the first thing that someone's going to say to you when you're in this like very stressed, panicky state? Take a deep breath, right? That's what they're going to tell you to take a deep breath. And that's the key to today's conversation. So here's the reason why I want to talk about the connection between your breath, how we can tap into that in order to better master our stress, and why this is such a big deal. Stress is one of the most common triggers. I already mentioned that, but I think it is worth repeating because of how many of us find that stress seems to exacerbate or trigger the flares that we experience. And I recognize that it's much easier to just take a medication or a supplement, a pill essentially, in order to deal with the stress that we experience. But in essence, what that does is sometimes it can actually help mask those symptoms Instead of drawing our awareness toward something that we need to pay attention to, and as I've shared many times on the Healthy Skin Show, our skin rashes may be a calling from deeper within to say, hey, we need to pay attention to ourselves. We need to tune in. That's why I've come to love breathing practices because they're very effective. They take only a matter of minutes and they're also free. They're certainly not going to fill up nutritional wells. They're not going to kill bacteria or rebalance your skin microbiome, but they are going to address an ongoing issue that you need support with. They're non-dogmatic, and there's something that you can literally do anywhere. And while you're right, you can't necessarily control all of the stressors and things and events that happen around you. Similarly to a thunderstorm that pops up in the middle of the afternoon, we can't control it. We just have to run for cover and wait it out. And so while you can control the choices that you make when that thunderstorm rolls by, you also have the power to control how you react to the stressors in your life, those thunderstorms that blow through life, make you feel very off balance, that then triggers your skin. If you're going to better control your stress and use breathing practices to do so, you need to know a couple of things. A shallow breath is equated with an increase in anxiety and stress. So if we go back to that question that I asked earlier, What happens when you are in this state of distress? Someone will say, take a deep breath. It's because our breath becomes increasingly shallow. We begin to take shorter and shallower breaths that only fill the upper portion of the lungs. When we take long, deep breaths, it actually signals to your mind that you are safe and that everything is okay. One interesting commentary that I often get from clients when I ask them to become aware of their breath is that they spend an awful long period of time throughout the day in a shallow state of breath or even holding their breath at times, not even aware that they're doing this. 
The connections between your breath and the nervous system are pretty well known at this point. And one of the most interesting things is that in a state of fight or flight, where you are confronted with a proverbial tiger of some sort, a stressor that makes you so upset, where you feel like you need to run, but you're not running anywhere because there's actually no tiger in front of you. Your body perceives that stressor, that incident as a tiger And so everything that's not essential to your survival is downregulated. Things like digestion, for example, are downregulated. When you eat in a very high state of stress, your body has a much more difficult time digesting and absorbing that food because it wants to run away. It doesn't know exactly from what, and it doesn't actually matter in this particular case because it could be anything. It could be the news that you watch on the TV, a stressful phone call that you just had, or thinking about something that's causing stress that hasn't happened yet. That's why it's critical, no matter what you are going through, whether it be dealing with a difficult boss, the traffic that you experience while you go to work, your marriage, your kids, other relationships, money, your rashes, whatever it may be. Breathing practices can be incredibly helpful to support you in dealing with all of it because how you react to those stressors changes significantly. So today I want to share with you three breathing practices that I have found incredibly helpful, not just for myself personally, but also for clients. I'm going to include video tutorials for each one of these breathing practices in the show notes for today's episode, which you can check out at skinterrupt.com forward slash 067. That way, I'll walk you through how to do these in a very short period of time. So that way you can begin to practice them at home. The first one is called the five count breath. Essentially, you're going to count your breath as a slow inhale for five and an exhale for five. The next step up would be to inhale for a count of five, hold the breath for a count of five, and exhale for a count of five. So there's those two variations. The second is called the four, seven, eight breath, which I learned from Dr. Andrew Weil about 12 years ago. It's very effective. Basically, what you're going to do is inhale for a count of four, hold the breath for a count of seven, and then exhale for a count of eight. And that's where we get four, seven, eight breath from. The final and third breath practice is called belly breathing. Basically, what you're going to do is place your hands somewhere on your body. There's two placements, either on either side of the belly or one hand on the belly and the other hand over your heart. And you're going to breathe into the hands. And so you take long, deep, slow breaths, pressing the breath internally into the palms of your hands. That way you can actually step out of your mind and your head and drop down into your body. And it can help people feel a lot more grounded, focused, and calm. All of this might sound great, but you may have some lingering concerns, worries, or fears about how to do this. So quickly, I'd like to share a couple of tips for doing breathing practices. The first thing is, If you can, sit down. Place both feet upon the floor. And if you don't have the option to sit down, you can also lie down on your back or you can stand with both feet grounded underneath your hips with the weight evenly distributed between both feet. Ideally, you want to be in a quiet place. That might not always happen, but trying to do breathing exercises in the midst of A large crowd may be quite difficult if you're not used to doing this initially. In order to ensure some sense of privacy while you do this, because typically people will close their eyes, is to close your door. Turn your phone's ringer off, shut off the TV, or turn off the computer screen. That way you can just be fully present to the quiet around you. Ultimately, the goal is that as you do these breathing practices, They become rote or very second nature to you so that when you are in a stressful situation, 
or you start to feel that sense of stress, panic, or anxiety, you reach for these tools and you can do them no matter where you are, no matter what's happening around you so that you can get the benefits of these practices. Now, here's the thing. You only need two minutes, two minutes a day. That's it. If you want to extend the amount of time that you do a breathing practice for, by all means, have at it. Go for it. Do your thing. And you can even do this practice two minutes, four minutes, five minutes, however long you want it to be, multiple times a day. One of the easiest ways to get out of your head is to set an alarm for the amount of time that you want to do a practice for. You can also do them anywhere in your office, in your car, in the bathroom, at a restaurant or a friend's house, at the gym, on an airplane. It doesn't really matter about where you do them. Just that you begin to practice at the same time every single day so that it becomes a habit. It's all about tuning into your body and prioritizing yourself. And if you struggle to commit to doing this daily, You know yourself so well that you're like, I might do it for two days and then fall off the wagon. The best suggestion that I can make to you is to set a daily reminder for yourself in your calendar, just as you would an appointment to go to the doctor or to pick up your daughter from soccer practice. That way, in those moments where you feel incredibly stressed, this is something that you automatically go to. You know how to do it. You don't need to watch a tutorial in the middle of feeling stressed. You just start breathing because you've built up that awareness and you've also created this muscle memory of how to do a practice that helps to ground you and remind your mind that you are safe. I know that's a lot of information and I wanted to make sure to share this with you because while we talk a lot about skin, the lifestyle pieces are equally and at times even more important than what supplements to take, what diet tweaks to make, how you talk about your skin issues at a doctor's appointment. It's practices like these that help you no matter what type of symptoms, diagnoses, or conditions that you are struggling with. So if you've got any questions about these breathing practices or other ones that maybe you've heard about or you've tried, head on over to skinterrupt.com forward slash 067 to leave a comment so that we can continue the conversation. And as I said, the tutorials for these specific breathing practices that I've created for you will also be posted there. Remember to subscribe to the show if you haven't done so yet and rate and review the Healthy Skin Show on your podcast platform of choice. It means a lot to me that you share that feedback, not just with me about what you love, but with the community at large so that as they're looking for something else new to tune into, they give the Healthy Skin Show a chance and learn something that they haven't learned before about their skin. And as always, make sure to share this episode with someone you know who can use these simple tools so that they can better navigate those thunderstorms of stress that pop up unexpectedly. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next episode.